Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. The world has much wildlife threatened with extinction, and high on that list are some of the most magnificent animals man has ever known. The Siberian tiger of Asia, the lowland gorilla of Central Africa, the Arabian oryx of the Middle East, and the orangutan of Borneo and Sumatra. These animals and many others may presently be getting their last chance for survival through the efforts of zoos and wild animal parks. Many species of endangered animals are being induced to breed in captivity by placing them in zoo natural habitat enclosures instead of cages, and by letting them roam freely in expansive wild animal parks. Recently, we were invited to observe the remarkable progress being made at the Bronx Zoo in New York and the San Diego Zoo in California and their related wild animal parks. We went first to the Bronx Zoo's Rare Animal Survival Center, located here on an island off the coast of Georgia. We're approaching St. Catherine's Island, which you can see in the distance. It is 12 miles long and three miles wide and can be reached only by boat. John Wood, superintendent of the island, tells me that at the time of the Declaration of Independence, the island was used to produce cotton and indigo. It has since grown back to a more natural forested state and is now the location of the Rare Animal Survival Center established by the New York Zoological Society. The general public is not permitted to come to this island because it is a haven for endangered animals which must not be disturbed. Hi, John. Hi, Marlon. With me today is the man who is in charge of the captive breeding program here at St. Catherine's Island, John Lucas of the New York Zoological Society. Here at St. Catharines, we are breeding rare and endangered animals to increase their numbers and perpetuate their species. Unlike wildlife preserves where the animals are completely free, the animals here are maintained in large enclosed natural areas with special facilities which allow for close observation, study, and control. Marlon, it's only a short scenic ride to the Rare Animal Survival Center. Okay. John is preparing to take me first to the interior of the island where it is open and grassy and is especially ideal for endangered plains animals. There are different types of subtropical habitat available for the species that are brought here. Some of the forests are very deep, providing excellent conditions for various species of woodland animals. Undoubtedly, this habitat will be put to full use in time to come. The emphasis now, however, is on animals of more open terrain, and these are kept in special expansive fenced compounds like this. Years ago, the grasslands here were used for producing hogs and cattle. The present use is far more important. In this area, for example, a breeding nucleus of Grevy zebras was recently established. The Grevy zebras have had their natural habitat in Kenya, Somalia, and Ethiopia destroyed by cattle and have themselves been poached for their beautiful, highly prized hides. Because their wild population is rapidly diminishing, the center hopes to establish a productive herd as an important reservoir for the species. In an adjacent 20-acre enclosure, three species of hoofed animals from North Africa are kept together successfully. These are the Adax, the little slender horned gazelle, and the larger Dama gazelle. Overhunted by nomads and their habitat destroyed, less than 2,000 Adaxes remain in the wild. These species have adapted well to St. Catherine's Island and there is hope they will survive.
The successful breeding of these animals here may help to prevent the threatened extinction of their species, even though extermination should occur among the remainder of the wild ones. Another enclosure nearby contains a group of red kangaroos from Australia. The females are gray in color instead of red like the males. Since their arrival here in December 1976, the three females have given birth to five joys, three of which are still in the pouches. Not endangered, they're bred here to provide educational and study opportunities at various zoos and wildlife parks. The St. Catharines Island research involves more than the breeding of mammals confined in specific compounds. It also includes studying non-captive wildlife here in other habitat areas, such as along the seashores. Some species, like the brown pelicans, have moved in on their own. Once abundant in coastal areas of our southern states, they have diminished alarmingly in recent years. St. Catharines Island is unique. It is being preserved in its native pristine condition for research and conservation of wildlife. It is not open to the public, but it is a promise to mankind and nature, a promise to preserve, if humanly possible, the existence of species threatened with extinction. In the Bronx Zoo in New York City, natural habitat environments have been established for endangered animals. The best way to see these animals is by riding on a special monorail train through the natural habitat exhibits. We're aboard the monorail now, just entering the Asian natural habitat exhibits to see the Siberian tigers. Escorting me here is the director of the Bronx Zoo, Mr. William Conway. The endangered animals we keep here, such as these Siberian tigers, are kept not only as a safeguard against their extinction, but for scientific study, with the aim being to learn more about them. And thus, we will be better able to preserve those which remain in the wild. The largest of the cats is the Siberian tiger of Siberia, China, and Korea which may weigh more than 600 pounds and attain a length of 11 feet from nose to tip of tail. According to the latest official count, there are 643 Siberian tigers in the zoos of the world, more than three times the 200 estimated to remain in the wild. All tiger subspecies are either threatened, endangered, or extinct. This is Maria, or Mama, as she is more affectionately called by her keepers. She has raised 17 cubs over a period of 11 years, her latest, two males, were born January 20th, 1977. The cubs usually stay with the mother for two or three years, and the female does not breed again until the youngsters are able to take care of themselves. The Bronx Zoo is having good success in breeding tigers, resulting in over 60 cubs. If the habitat can be protected, the species may survive. We're going to move on now, passing through some of the other natural habitat areas of the Bronx Zoo to the station where we can get out and take a close look at something very special. Marlon, I'll just be a moment. Okay. Now we're going to walk over and see one of the rarest members of the cat family and learn what is being done to preserve it here in the Bronx Zoo. Boy. Marlon, the Bronx Zoo is one of the few zoological institutions anywhere in the world to breed this highly endangered cat, the snow leopard from the high Himalayas. According to published reports, there were only 72 snow leopards in 18 zoos in the United States. This cub is one of two born here at the zoo on June 5. 
And we're especially proud because it marks the third generation of snow leopards born in captivity at the Bronx Zoo. And we think that that'll help us continue in a long-term program of propagation for this endangered species. You're doing a great job with these magnificent animals. See you later, Bill. These are Formosan Sika deer, once found in the mountainous interior of Formosa. This race of Sika deer has been officially extinct in the wild since September of 1973. Today it exists only in zoos and preserves. Hopefully they can be reestablished in the wild. There is a growing awareness among conservationists that the role zoos are playing in preserving wildlife is extremely important. The Bronx Zoo, with its related wild animal rearing program at St. Catharines Island, is only one of a growing number of zoos where such projects are occurring. Another is taking place all the way across this continent into California at the San Diego Zoo. This zoo is a leader in efforts to prevent extinction of endangered species. Here to show us their program is Joan Embry, well-known Goodwill Ambassador for the San Diego Zoo. In the natural habitat enclosures in this zoo, orangutans and other desperately endangered species are being preserved and propagated. Many zoos encompass far more than the display of animals which the visitor sees. Research in animal diseases, nutrition, behavior, and reproduction is carried on in major zoos. Here at the San Diego Zoo, our emphasis on reproduction has resulted in many notable breeding successes of endangered species. An excellent example is the birth of these twin orangs which occurred last year. Multiple births among the great apes are very rare. We think the birth of these orang twins was only the seventh instance in captivity. Orang twins are probably born in the wild too, but the chances of their survival there are very slim. In fact, orangs in the native habitats of Borneo and Sumatra are severely threatened. Their environment is being destroyed by the lumber industry and probably less than 5,000 animals survive. When the animals disappear, survival in zoos and preserves may be their only chance. These orangs are being raised in our nursery because their mother found two babies at one time were too much to cope with. Having the natural mother rear the offspring is the best situation, but sometimes a substitute human mother has to step in when that is impossible. While they are in the nursery, Locke and Lisa get much the same kind of attention a human infant would get because their needs are much the same. Another endangered species with which we have had breeding success is right over here. This little fellow I'm holding is called a lemur. Lemurs are prosimians, a primitive kind of primate. Primates include monkeys and apes. Lemurs come from the islands of Madagascar, and all species of lemurs are endangered for the same reason that so much wildlife is threatened. Their habitat is in danger of being destroyed. Some years ago, the Madagascar government cooperated with the San Diego Zoo to set up captive breeding groups of these endangered animals in the event that they were eliminated from their wild habitat. Here at the San Diego Zoo, we have been working with lemurs to determine in detail what their reproductive cycle is, and we feel fairly safe in saying that the continuing captive reproduction of some species seems promising. And the long-term outlook is good even if their wild habitat should someday be destroyed. One of the most popular exhibits here at the zoo is the pygmy chimpanzee. It's also considered to be an endangered species. Pygmy chimpanzees are closely related to the common chimpanzee. The most obvious physical difference is their size. They are only two-thirds the size of the common chimp. Another distinguishing physical characteristic is their dark-skinned faces. 
Pygmy chimpanzees come from a small area of Central Africa, and no one knows for certain what their wild population is. We've been fortunate here at the San Diego Zoo in that our adult pair have produced over eight offspring in the last several years. This is at present the only reproducing pair of pygmy chimpanzees in the Western Hemisphere. We have sent some of the offspring to other zoos in this country and in Europe in the hope of expanding the captive reproduction of this rare species. And now, it's feeding time for Kaylin. The Zoological Society of San Diego also has a program of breeding endangered animals in more expansive conditions here, just 30 miles northeast of the city of San Diego, at the San Diego Wild Animal Park. This arid terrain is similar to the native habitat of many animals in the captive breeding program. Far below Joan Embry is part of the San Diego Wild Animal Park an 1,800-acre preserve. One goal of the park is to breed enough endangered animals so that they may possibly be released where they have become extinct, or to augment wild populations that have diminished alarmingly. An exciting story for Joan Embry is what the program has accomplished in regard to the Arabian oryx. Zoos, aside from their traditional role as educational links to the animal world, are becoming increasingly important as agents of conservation. Captive breeding programs establish nucleus herds of vanishing species. Rather than extinction, there is hope for eventual return to native wild habitat. One of 19 endangered species here at the Wild Animal Park, the Arabian oryx is an example of this success. Some years ago, due to excessive hunting and other human pressures, this species faced extinction in the wild. Fortunately, some of these animals had been preserved in zoos and wild animal parks. As is obvious from this one-day-old oryx, the captive breeding program here has been successful and we're gradually increasing the oryx population. Other endangered species living here in similar protected habitats for captive breeding include the Indian rhino. This magnificent animal was formerly very abundant in various parts of Southeast Asia, and much of its habitat has been destroyed, where no more than 1,000 wild individuals still survive. The breeding success of the endangered cheetah here underlines the value of the program. A total of 31 cheetah cubs have been born in seven different litters here. With such success, the cheetah's threatened extinction may be averted. This moated natural habitat enclosure has proven ideal for an extremely endangered primate, the lowland gorilla of Western Africa. This is a family group of the great apes. On several occasions at this park, offspring have been born. These gorillas have adapted perfectly to their surroundings here, and their reproduction may hold a promise for continuation of the species which is so swiftly vanishing in the wild. In time to come, they may exist only in captivity and survive only through the captive breeding programs. Among the rarest of the world's zebra species is the Hartman's mountain zebra, whose population has decreased due to loss of habitat from man's encroachment. Here they can run and breed in peace, and like the Arabian oryx, are increasing in numbers. Our oryx program is quite inspiring. Arabian oryx have done very well, and as a result, Four offspring of this herd were released recently in Jordan.
This effort marks the first return of a species considered extinct in the wild to its natural habitat. For many animals like the Arabian oryx, zoos and parks may be a last chance for survival. Now, for a final stop, we'll take a brief ride through some of the natural habitat terrain being maintained here at the expansive San Diego Wild Animal Park to look at another of the endangered animals. Probably no other factor in wildlife preservation is so important as maintaining natural habitat. No matter how many animals are produced in captivity, they can't survive in the wild without the habitat they require. Elephants, the largest of land animals, are especially sensitive to habitat destruction by humans because elephants normally migrate over large ranges, sometimes more than 1,000 square miles. Extensive areas of this territory are being claimed for human habitation and agriculture. And now, many of the elephant populations are limited to protected preserves. In the future, zoos and parks will play an increasing role in the survival of the elephant. There is much promise for the future of endangered animals with the captive breeding programs established by zoos and wild animal parks. Already, certain species that are still diminishing or barely holding their own in their indigenous habitat are breeding well in captivity under carefully controlled conditions as we've seen. Some of these animals born in captivity are being reintroduced to areas where they once lived. Others exist nowhere in the world except in zoos, and the efforts to induce them to reproduce are promising. Obviously, the programs undertaken by the New York and San Diego Zoological Societies are excellent models for other societies and governments to follow. Through captive wild animal breeding and conservation of habitat, man may be able to help restore endangered animals to a viable role in the wild kingdom. <laughs>